You're live. Okay. Ooh. Figure it out. There it is. <laughs> All right. This is Jeff Morton. Uh, I'm here with uh, Anilo Piro. That's me. Uh, what's your Twitter? At A Piro Sports. A Piro Sports. Is I'm at King of Thornton. Uh, as if you didn't know already. Um, so we're just we just left shoot around. Yep. Uh, what's your takeaway? I rate that, but he said, you know, if we could go five and one on this homestand, um, that'd be fantastic. So I, I think <laughs> Malone's uh, Malone's answers were pretty cut and dry for the most part for a head coach, but I think you get the sense today from talking with the players and just kind of seeing the vibe there that these guys want this one tonight. You know, it's interesting. I I, I was thinking about the, the the what Paul Millsap was saying with mm-hmm. the um, kind of talking about getting comfortable with the offense, and that is really a function of the lack of preseason. Yeah. Um, the Nuggets really haven't been able to have a, I mean, with five preseason games, they haven't been able to get into a, a rhythm. Yeah. And as I always tell people, the first quarter of the season is getting yourself right. And you could really tell that with the Nuggets. But I think right uh, last night, I, not last night. Two nights ago. Two nights ago, I saw the Nuggets really start to get right, even though their offense wasn't great. Their defense was locked in, uh, particularly uh, Mason Plumley, who yes. uh, uh, Malone com- uh, complimented today. Yeah, no, he's been big on kind of how Mason's been able to kind of slide in. And, and the question was kind of posed, you know, how has Mason been able to, you know, be mixed and match, you know, different times in the game, different roles, different positions with different players on the court. And he's been able to kind of excel in that with uh, two nights ago being his uh, best game of the season, I'd say. Overall, just his, his best all-around performance between, you know, finding the open man with passing, being able to score the ball at an efficient rate, uh, and also just being able to play solid lockdown defense in place of Nikola Jokic. You know, Jokic actually said after that game, you know, I, I couldn't get into the rhythm early on, but maybe Mason was able to kind of step in and fill that void for me to a certain extent. So Mason kind of um, starting to get uh, more integrated with this team, Millsap getting more integrated with this team. I think you kind of alluded to it, Jeff. Uh, the comfort level overall is just starting to uh, kind of get there, in, in, per se. We got a question about why Fareed Malone, uh, if Malone talked about it, Fareed, why Fareed didn't play. Um, he did. It was specifically in relation to Mason Plumlee. Yeah. Uh, Mason Plumlee did so well that it was – uh, basically made it to where they couldn't really wedge um, Kenneth Fareed in there. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's been just kind of like the mindset with Fareed all year long, I'd say, is they view him as this high-energy, high-intensity guy, but they're not necessarily going to try to specifically find him minutes. Uh, that's kind of the vibe that yeah. I've been getting. Uh, if, they can, if they can figure out a way to get Plumlee in there, they will. I mean, Fareed's name has been thrown around in trade rumors for like the better part of like four seasons now, it seems. So while he does have a role with this team, I don't think his value is necessarily as high as Mason's is, uh, considering he just signed that three-year deal. So Fareed's a little bit of a wild card with this team because if he can um, manage to buy into what this team wants him to be, I think he could be effective. And we get the comment here from Jeremy, if we can only play with Jokic, I I agree with that to a certain extent, and I, and I think that's how Coach Malone kind of used it as well. Malone has reiterated more times than none how he hates playing Fareed and Plumlee next to each other, and he really likes playing free specifically with Jokic. Well, it's interesting, the, the different skill sets that the, these guys have, um, Plumlee is, because of his range, is limited, and he really needs a guy next to him who he can uh, kind of just be a defensive anchor next to, and it, he had a great great chemistry going with Emmanuel Moutier, yes. who had an amazing game uh, last game. I believe he was 8 for 10. 8 for 10 from the field, 4 for 4 from 3-point range uh, for a season-high 21 points. That's pretty amazing, yeah. and I think that that was maybe the best game I've seen him play since yeah. Boston. Uh, uh, two years, rookie season. Uh, was that, or was no, that last year? Last year. It was, uh, it was like one of the early road trips yeah, last year. I remember that. Mm-hmm. And they, he really, really uh, showed out in that game, and he did this this game too. Uh, do you think that uh, – what do you think that uh, Moutier did? Do you think he gave himself um, like an opportunity to uh, get into that starting role considering uh, Jamal Murray's struggles? I, and I'm, I think that's a good point that you bring up, and I'm kind of curious to see how this plays out because with Jamal in his recent – his boomer bust play, I think is how I'm going to label yeah. you know, He'll give you one or two good games in a row, follows up with four or five poor ones. And he's kind of on the downswing of those poor games, um, just overall struggling to score the ball at this point in time. But I think so. I, I mean, this is a – Nuggets and Coach Malone have reiterated more times than none, you know, we're going to go with a 21 and a 20-year-old point guard. Uh, I think that's a large reason. I mean, 
they didn't trade for Eric Bledsoe, and there's obviously yeah. multiple reasons for that, but they're obviously comfortable enough with one of these two guys being the starter and then the other one obviously being the bench unit guy to kind of uh, file in and place from there. But I think if Moutier can continue to play well, score, and also I think the biggest thing with Moutier is limit the turnovers. If he can limit the damage on that aspect, I think he certainly has a chance, assuming Jamal Murray is on, uh, continues to underperform and uh, fails to establish some sort of consistency because one thing that Moutier has been uh, throughout this entire year so far is consistently good for the most part. Yeah. I mean, he's been bad in spurts, but for the most part, uh, I think you've seen you, you've seen the growth from last year to this year. That's important with Moutier. Yeah. And I mean, you got to kind of run with lightning in a bottle if you have it. If he's playing well, I think you go with the hot hand. But right now, I think you stay with Jamal Murray as your starter. But uh, I'd say, you know, over the course of the next 10 games, I, I think this is where you start to take a look in the mirror and, and consider a change if it keeps up like this. Well, it's, it's interesting to watch because um, Murray, as you pointed out, will go through these boom and bust cycles. Yeah. He's very likely to go through, you know, he, he could, you know, he could go through um, another bad game next game. Although I don't, I think he actually had an okay game this last game. I, let's not get it twisted. He had a, he had a good, um, he had a good uh, second half yeah. of this game. It wasn't the first half, but the second half where basically he was benched. Um, in the first half, yeah. for in, in favor of Man- Emmanuel Moutier, but in the second half he played really well, even though Moutier played generally down the stretch. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think the Nuggets will do tonight? They play the Orlando Magic. Uh, the Magic are came in. They played last night. Uh, they beat the Phoenix Suns. Beat up on them. Too. Um, but who doesn't beat up on the Suns? Yes, these days? this is true. <laughs> um, the most important question is: What do we expect the uh, Nuggets to see out of uh, uh, Mario Hazonia? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna, oh man, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting game tonight. But like I said, I think Millsap kind of reiterated it today at shoot around. Um, you know, this is a game that we have to get. And I quite frankly, Orlando, yes, while well, they've exceeded expectations so far this year, it's a winnable game. Specifically being at home to wrap up what has been an incredible homestand so far for this Nuggets team. So they're four and one right now. Opportunity to finish five and one with the only loss coming against Golden State. I, I think the team recognizes that. That's the vibe that I got at least today at shoot around. That they're prepared, they're ready, and they know it's at stake in terms of an opportunity to kind of finish on a good note and a strong note moving on to a, a road game with New Orleans coming up next week. So I think the Nuggets are going to come out firing. I think they're going to come out strong. And uh, I think the biggest thing that you're going to have to realize from today's game, or not realize, but you're going to have to watch for is, can they guard the three-point line and can they stop Aaron Gordon? Because he's been a man on a mission throughout the entirety of this season so far. So if they can do uh, if they can do those two things, I think the Nuggets should come out on top. Yeah, I agree. And Orlando is an interesting team because you're not we're not used to seeing the Magic um, – Outside of that Dwight Howard, uh, Jameer Nelson period, um, we haven't seen them uh, waving to Tim Gilt. Um, we haven't seen them this kind of advance offensively. Yeah. They've been really struggling uh, offensively for a while now. Um, but right now what I'm seeing is a team that is spaces the floor and shoots a lot of threes. And to be honest with you, it has uh, been a, a while for the NBA to, to kind of adjust yeah. to this, specifically Aaron Gordon shooting all those threes sure. and making them because, let's face it, he didn't really have no, the greatest stroke before. But it seems like he's advanced past that. So the, they're coming in here on the back-to-back, and we'll see if the Nuggets can do what they need to do because they, you know, they kind of implied today that they really wanted to get this game. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they get this game, it'll be a 5-1 and one homestand, yeah. which I think is huge considering it'll be probably the best homestand they've had, a long projected homestand they've had in several years. Yeah. So it's going to be an important one. Like I said, um, this is their season-long six-game homestand opportunity tonight against the Magic to uh, you know, wrap things up here on a good note before they hit the road to go to New Orleans for that game. But uh, I, I think another big thing is, you know, through the first, I think it was, six or seven games there was kind of a lot of question marks surrounding this team I think a lot of those question marks have kind of been removed or subsided to a certain extent so an opportunity to kind of keep the train moving forward per se I have a story uh, coming out of today from uh, from shoot around uh, specifically on Paul Millsap's comments coming on myeyesports.com's here uh, shortly so look out for that but uh, yeah I'll be covering the game tonight alongside TJ McBride I think Dev Johnson and Matt Smith are always going to be there as well so going to be a good night right here from Pepsi Center in a few hours All right, yeah be sure to check out all our articles on Mile High Sports Um, I had one that came out recently um, about uh, the Denver's obsession with the Broncos. It was good. Um, really good. And uh, Anilo has got uh, several columns <laughs> that he has done this last week. Um, TJ McBride is our new addition, and so is Brendan Vote. Yep. Um, and also check out Dev Johnson. And he uh, Anilo does these videos with uh, Matt, Matt Smith, Smith. Yep. these recap videos that Every go game. in our recaps. Uh, we got the most unique and I think best 
uh, Nuggets coverage in Denver. I'd say so. So uh, be, be sure and check everyone out uh, a, at Anilo. At A Piro Sports. A Piro Sports. P I R O. P I R O. A P I R O Sports. Okay. And at King of Thornton. And uh, this is us signing off from Pesky Center. Goodbye. Adios.